Good evening. I call this uh, meeting of the City Council on July 22nd to order. Uh, first thing we have is roll call. Briggs? Yes. Weber? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hay? Yes. And do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve the minutes. Second. Briggs? Yes. Weber? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hey? Yes. First thing on our agenda tonight is a public hearing, and I need a motion. I need to call that to order, please. I move that we open the public hearing to consider the submission of an FY 2023 Community Development Block Grant application. Check. Briggs? Yes. Weber? Yes. Williams? Yes. Miller? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Slagle, do you want to yeah. start that off? Um, the public hearing is uh, for the submission of a community development block grant. And uh, this is uh, in cooperation with uh, Presser Arts Center. And to cover the details, uh, Rita Jackson. Good evening, Council. As stated, this public hearing is to obtain citizens' input for the submission of an FY23 Community Development Block Grant with a maximum grant amount of $500,000. The type of activities that are eligible for funding includes the improvements of public works, public facilities, housing rehabilitation, and others as allowed by law. The city is proposing the improvement to Presser Arts Center for a new addition. This addition would be located at Presser Arts Center and Richardson Hall, actually located between Presser Arts Center and uh, Richardson Hall. It is a 4,711 4, square foot space that they, the new addition will have. This addition is needed to provide accommodations for community members participating in creative art programs. The space, the space provided by Presser Arts will include an educational space, a steam shop with ceramic corners. <clears throat> it will provide workshops for all the construction equipment, mezzanine for storage, potter wheels, slab rollers, a scissors lift and an office. The new construction also contains a flexible classroom containing space for the choir, including a baby grand piano, screening space for film, full kitchen for culinary classes, and a full restroom. This space will serve as a workshop slash classroom space and summer camp space for summer arts education. After school art education, ceramic classes, art classes, dance, community choir, theater, art gallery, and culinary courses. Film initiatives, set construction, and disability arts. Currently, there is simply not enough space available, and there are waiting lists for participation, participants wanting to engage in the programs and the projects. If more space were created on the existing property, more people could actually serve. Audrain County dropout rate is 1.4%. Research has shown that high quality art education experiences help children develop key skills and achieve future success throughout their lives. So basically it is educational for persons of all income limits, low to moderate income, all the way up to uh, their higher education. The city is proposing the support of a community facility grant for Presser Arts Center for the addition of, of an educational art space, scene, shop, and kitchen located at 900 South Jefferson. The area addressed is bounded by Calhoun Street to the east, Jefferson Street to the west, Green Boulevard to the south, and Seminary Street to the north. Financial assistance is necessary due to Presser Arts Center being a 501c3 non-for-profit organization and revenues are not needed for the new space addition. 
The project can only be successful with the assistance of the CDBG grant. Presser Art Center has received NAP credits, pledges, foundation donations, and gifts on, from their out, ongoing fundraising. There will be no displacement of persons resulting from the project, and if there were, assistance to any displacement person would be provided according to the Uniform Relocation and Real Property Acquisition Act of 1970, as amended Section 104D, Section 104K, or Section 105A, 11, of Title I Act. Bids have been received totaling 2.3 million for the project. The city proposes to contribute 15,000 in in-kind labor by city staff and 1,785,000 in cash contributions through donations and gifts to Presser Arts Center with a grant amount of $500,000. The city is soliciting its citizen input on the entity ongoing community development needs. I will say that at our in our June meeting, uh, we did bring for Presser Arts the demolition uh, grant. The reason that the city actually does these grants under the CDBG program, only city and counties can actually um, apply for these funds. And normally throughout the history of the city of Mexico, uh, the grants have been done in-house and our contribution was normally city staff uh, contribution. Um, and with that, I do have uh, Lois Brace in the audience for additional information. City staff recommend the council proceed with the advertised public hearing. Thank you. So additionally, I did want to mention that um, we were visited back in November of 23 by Mitch Rodman out of the um, economic development from the state. We looked at the building. And he actually encouraged us to proceed with CDBG because um, they're kind of, they backlogged a little bit from 23. So now they have two cycles that they're going through, FY23 and FY24. And each year, each um, local jurisdiction is allowed two grants per year. So no one had come forth out of Mexico for such a long time who was encouraging us to do so. So we would be allowed, well, Mexico would be allowed to put forth four CDBG grant requests. And so I hesitated none when applying for two. So Presser would be so grateful if um, we could receive CDBG funding. John, any questions? Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Right. Right. We attended a workshop last week, and it was daunting to say the least. Now she's used to it. She's the pro grant writer, but it was it's a lot. I think we can do it. Okay. And we're getting a lot of encouragement from the state. A lot of the development crews on the day. And I have a, a board member that would like to speak if that's okay. Oh, certainly. It's a public hearing. Are they supposed to say their name in the three yeah. minutes? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm guys, before you speak, wait, 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 wait. Just for the record, you need to state your name and your address, and uh, you're technically you have three minutes. Go ahead. My name is John Hasley. My address is 3300 North Route Z in Columbia, Missouri. I belong to the BFW here in Mexico. We build sets at Presser. We volunteer to build sets at Presser. The scene shop edition would be a huge benefit for us. Right now, we're so cramped for space that we have to build part of these sets out of doors. The material is all stored in the basement of Richardson, which is a, a real hardship moving that stuff sometimes over to the building. Uh, the, uh, like I said, the, the equipment that we use is all stored in a very small place, and it's typical of those things that you need is in the back. So it, it's unhandy to do that. So this would be a huge benefit to us. Okay, thank you. I would like 
have to add that um, the Lawrence mentioned the two grand cycles. This year only is the 23 and the 24 because of COVID and they were not allowed to actually uh, submit grants at the time. They did not get uh, several grants, but they have reached out to several cities that they're looking for people to actually, cities to actually utilize the funds. These, uh, the demolition grant will actually be submitted this Wednesday and uh, the deadline for submission for both grants would be in September and they hope to have a deadline by, this is December, about to December, by December of this year, year on the grants and they're actually the reviewing them as they go in. Okay. It's kind of a year. So, okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I have got a question, I guess. And I think I'm 99% sure I know what it means, but I don't know that it really says that. It says that the city proposes to contribute 15,000 in kind laborers by city staff and a million seven eighty five in cash contributions, comma, through donations and gifts to Presser Arts Center. It doesn't say that comes from the public. It indicates to me that it, the way it's written that it comes from the city, and I'm sure that's not correct. That is not correct. So if this goes out to the media or somebody, as Chris pointed out, it needs, it needs to be, be corrected. Clar clarified. Certainly. Left out the comment in there. Anybody else? Anybody else? I move to close the public hearing. Just a second. Yes. 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 Okay, next item on the business is an ordinance that requires two readings by title only and passage, Bill number 2442. Uh, Mr. Schleim. Yes, Your Honor. This is for a TAP grant that we have received from the uh, Missouri Highways and Transportation, <coughs> Missouri DOT. And uh, this is for a, a sidewalk reconstruction project. Uh, along Muldrow Street, and this would uh, be phase three. But to cover the details, uh, Drew Willifer. Good evening, Council. As Bruce mentioned, we're blessed to have uh, another phase of our TEP grant applications approved. So this will actually run both sides of Muldrow between Buchanan and Boulevard, completing the sidewalk reconstruction along Muldrow Street. As part of the process, though, the first step is actually accepting the award from MoDOT via an ordinance. So it's a requirement for the grant. We're requesting the council proceed with two readings by title only and passage to support the grant process. It's important to note that the grant is a 20% cost share. The total project cost being $371,066.31 and the city share being roughly $74,000. So recommend proceeding. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Am I reading this right? This is two years out. <coughs> is it what? Two years away. Two years away. So this it says 2026 <coughs> in my packet here. The project oh, schedule. Oh, the schedule? It has to be spent by that point. It doesn't have to be. It's not that you can't start into that point. It's, it has to be spent by that point. I think that's what you're reading there. Under the schedule portion of it? Yeah, it just says construction contract awarded or planning study completed 6-1 of 26. Right. So we get into trouble if we don't get it awarded by that date. We, if we get it awarded before then, we're good. But that's kind of their drop dead date of we've got to spend this money. It's, it's been allocated by Federal Highway. Okay. I move for first reading of bill number 2024-42. Second. Yes. 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 Bill number 2024-42 in order accepting the Transportation Alternatives Program TAP grant award from the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission and authorizing the city manager to sign agreement documents pertinent to this award. I move for second reading of bill number 2024-42. Second. Yes. 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 Uh, bill number 2024-42, Norton is setting the Transportation Alternatives Program TAP, grant award from the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission and authorizing the city manager to sign agreement documents pertinent to this award. I move for passage of bill number 2024-42. Second. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next thing on our agenda are some resolutions. Um, Reading by title only and passage. We begin with bill number 2024-43. Mr. Schlegel, do you have any more to add to? Uh, Your Honor, all we have to say with this is this is the resolution uh, of the city so that uh, stating our intent to seek funding through the Community Development Block Grant and authorize uh, the signing of those activities to secure the funding. And this is for the Community Development Block Grant for Presser that we talked about earlier during the public hearing. So okay. unless you have any other questions, we would just recommend council proceed with uh, reading and passage of the attached resolution. Do I have a motion? I have a motion I'm to read. <coughs> Bill number 2024-43. Second. Rick. Yes. Weber. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Okay. Yes. Bill number 2024-43, a resolution of the City of Mexico, Missouri, stating intent to seek funding through the Community Development Block Grant Program and authorizing the city manager to pursue activities in an attempt to secure funding. I move for passage of Bill number 2024-43. Second. Rick. Yes. Weber. Yes. Williams. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and your presentation. Okay, Bill Number Twenty Four Forty Four, um, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with the Me Mexico Young Farmers and the Village Square Association. Mr. Schlegel. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This is uh, for funding from the tourism uh, tax. The uh, uh, Tourism Commission has met and has some recommendations, and to cover those recommendations, Roger Haynes. Good evening, Council. The Tourism Commission met via Zoom on Wednesday, July 17th, and as part of that meeting, discussed two applications for funding. The first one discussed was from the receipt from the Mexico Young Farmers for their 2024 tractor truck pull that is scheduled for Saturday, August 31st. The requested amount for advertising funding was $5,966. The commission recommends funding in the amount of $5,000. Uh, this event was funded in the amount of $5,000 last year and then $4,500 in both years 2021 and 2022. The second request was from the Mexico Village Square Association. It is for their November, December 24 activities basically garnered around the holidays. The advertising request in the amount of $1,000. The commission recommends $1,000 be funded. And uh, last year, the Mexico Village Square Association was funded and approved in the amount of $1,000. Staff recommends that council concur with the Mexico Tourism Commission's recommendation and proceed with reading by title only and passage of the attached resolution. Be glad to answer any questions. I move for reading of Bill 2024-44. Second. Okay. I'm sorry, yes. Yes. Weber. Yes. Williams. Yes. Miller. Yes. Hay. Yes. yes. Bill number 2024-44, resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement with the Mexico Young Farmers and the Mexico Village Square Association for recommended funding from the Mexico Tourism Tax. I move for passage of Bill number 2024-44. Second. Chris? Yes. Chris? Yes. Chris? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, turning the page. Is everything there? Okay, turning the page. Other business. We have a staff report. Mr. Schlegel. We missed another one. Resolution. Did we miss one? another resolution? Mm -hmm. Okay, bottom one. I marked it off too soon. Okay, bill number 24-45. Uh, we have a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign contract documents with uh, regarding repairs. Mr. Schlegel. Yes, sir. This is with uh, Plan B Development. This is our on-call engineer, uh, our on-call contractor, and this is for some repairs on Huntington Court that our street department uh, isn't able to get to, and so uh, we're requesting to use our on-call contractor to do those. And to cover the details, Drew Williford. <coughs> Oh, Council Bruce covered the majority of it. That is uh, so much work and so little time. We're recommending to use our on-call contractors to get one particular piece of work that's been on our radar for some time completed in this fiscal year. And Plan B was awarded a three-year contract. 
contract for being a beyond call contractor through a request for proposal process back in February. And so being our current on-call contractor, we approached them for an estimate for concrete repairs on Huntington Court. Huntington Court is a small cul-de-sac. It's located off of the West End of Lakeview. There are significant problems in the cul-de-sac and further up the street back towards Lakeview. So we approached them, we've got an estimate of $19,440 to complete the concrete repairs. Also involves adjusting the manhole, so some manhole work as well in the sanitary sewer. This is an estimate for maybe clear just labor and equipment. So we would be providing the material, we'll cover the concrete costs for it. We anticipate being nearly about $5,000. So we're recommending to proceed here in our budget, what we have remaining anticipated after the next large project, which is the 2024 chip seal project coming into town. We anticipate having $38,000 remaining in the account. So we do have sufficient funding to proceed with this work and get Huntington Court up to par in comparison to many of the other streets in town. So we'd recommend council proceed with reading by title only and passage. And if you have any questions, we we'll have an answer. Was the manhole at one time flush with the concrete? It's a good question because that manhole is down very proud. Uh, I'm not, obviously the manhole is not moved. Has the concrete settled quite a bit? I, I can say probably yes. Uh, but I, it's an interesting, all through there, there's quite a bit of movement of soils. So it, I guess it's not too surprising that area down. Mm -hmm. My, my answer would probably be yes originally, but someone from that neighborhood who has probably lived there their whole life would be able to tell you for sure. I move for reading to bill number 2024-45. Second. Yes. Weber? Yes. Weber? Yes. Weber? Yep. Eight. Yes. Bill number 2024-45, a resolution authorized city mayor to sign contract documents with Plan B Development LLC to conduct repairs on Huntington Court. I move for passage of bill number 2024-45. Second. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you all. Uh, Thank you, Drew. Is that it? Okay. You get the next one. one more thing. You're gonna buy some. Yeah. Oh, you're up here for the yeah, next thing. Yeah, you're gonna buy some. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda is a staff report, uh, the heavy construction equipment, uh, Mr. Schleyer. Yes, Your Honor. This is uh, uh, for budgeted equipment and uh, to recommend on some purchasing. And uh, once again, Drew Wilford. In our current fiscal year budget, we anticipated the purchase of a new concrete breaker that would go on the extension of a excavator and also on our skid steer, as well as the purchase of a new wheel loader bucket, both of which are fairly expensive pieces of equipment. So we have a budget in our current fiscal year of $43,500 for the combination of these two, two items. Uh, we went forward with getting a uh, list of specifications put together and sent that out to uh, potential vendors. I believe we have a total of six vendors that we sent that to and we advertised them next to a ledger court. As part of that process, we ended up with <coughs> two bids, <coughs> excuse me, one from Martin Equipment out of Columbia, Missouri at a cost of $39,900. That includes $1,500 traded on the wheel loader bucket. And then one from uh, Wear Parts and Equipment out of Aurora, Colorado. Uh, that particular one was for uh, $38,457 with no trade-in. It's important to know we did have a specification set. We did not have the bid provided by the wear parts and equipment met those specifications. There are several problems with that, one of which is the actual blowback mechanism that the breaker uses. Uh, it uses a system that does not use a cushion, uh, which has a nitrogen gas cushion for it, and we don't anticipate that their system would last nearly as long. The reason for these two pieces of equipment actually somewhat go together, we use that concrete breaker routinely in pretty harsh uh, circumstances, environments. So think of a basement for a demolition house. 
that that has caused quite a bit of pain for our equipment and caused quite a bit of repairs, a heavy duty breaker like this should alleviate quite a bit of that issue on our equipment. Similarly, the wheel loader bucket is used in a lot of operations. It's got a clamshell design where it can uh, hydraulically close and pick up equipment or limbs or whatever it may be the need. So uh, it's pretty high use and high intensity purpose. The other thing I'll mention that's included on this as well is a set of forks for the skid steer to help with loading and unloading. Uh, one thing that has developed in, I would say, actually the last hour, to be honest with you, was a conversation with my street superintendent that I would like to bring up for consideration. He mentioned the idea of not providing the trade-in. The idea of that wheel loader bucket having a spare, we were initially going to trade that in because it got damaged. We went ahead and bent the steel back and then reinforced it. But it's it's compromised to a degree. But talking to him, it makes a lot of sense to me that we go ahead and keep that and use that bucket whenever we end up having a very demanding application. So if we need to do something that may involve carrying that bucket or getting close to that threshold, we'd have an older bucket to use and we wouldn't tear up a new one or be as likely to tear it up. So I thought I would recommend that idea as our proposal and modify this on the floor if, if willing. That would bring our price actually up to $41,000, $41,400 even. If council's agreeable, we would we would request to move forward with the purchase of that equipment from Martin Equipment out of Columbia, Missouri, at a total cost of forty-one thousand four hundred dollars, with no bucket trade in. If you have any questions? I'll be happy to answer. Them. Are they good with the forty-one four with no trade in? Are they good with that? We we have no reason to believe they aren't because whenever they provided the breakout, they provided a trade in as a separate line item. So we we saw the new price and then we saw the price below it as minus fifteen hundred dollars. I move for the purchase of the concrete breaker and wheel loader bucket for the street department from Martin Equipment, Columbia, Missouri for forty one thousand four hundred dollars. Second. Yes. 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 Okay, next item is pay the claims. Make a motion to pay the bills. Second. Yes. 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 Okay. Next item on the agenda is our council comments. So Steve, you want to say something? Nothing to uh I think the uh, communication last time was on your all's end, so <laughs> it wasn't on mine. The bathroom I was perfectly you were in a bathroom. perfect Wi-Fi. Yeah, there's not place, not many places to go at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> with your wife sleeping. So you, you're probably but, the first council person that ever communicated. From there you go. So in, in your breaking new ground. <laughs> hopefully, new hopefully ground. no Spaniard cut in on the <laughs> Zoom meeting and heard anything. But so nope, that's about it uh so you know just summer's going along so get out there and enjoy it so chris um loving the weather we had uh the optimus had their closing tournament this last weekend um it went very well it was a very good t-ball softball baseball season i think we all together we had almost 300 kids playing out for us and then all the other towns coming here on top of that so I was fortunate that we got to pull it off again this year. So. I really am going to pass. I have nothing to add. Chris, uh, Chris Miller? Nothing. I'm just living the dream. So what more can I ask for? Okay. I have absolutely nothing. I just want to be like Chris Miller when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, do you have anything? No. Okay. Okay, we're open for uh, a... Excuse me. No, we do you have something? Mm -hmm. Okay. We are open. Me. We have public comment, and there's nobody here, so I guess nobody's stepping up. So we'll pass on that. Do I have a motion? I move we adjourn into executive session pursuant to the revised statute of Missouri, 610021, legal action and legal advice. Second. Second.
Yes. 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 Yes.